Hey guys, welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video. In this video, I'll be building an SSTL that's going to go to Minmus to finish refueling the Saturn V on Minmus. In the last video, I sent a base to Minmus, and uh, the base has its own mining supplies so it can get fuel from the ground. And in this video, we're going to get some docking ports so that it can dock to the Saturn V. If you haven't seen that video already, I'll leave a link in the description. Make sure to check that out. And while you're down there, make sure to click the like and subscribe button. Alright, enough of the YouTube stuff. Uh, currently, I'm building an SSTO. And that SSTO is, I think, it looks really cool. It's going to have uh, six rapier engines and two nuclear engines on it. And just, a, just one FLTO tank of oxidizer fuel. Crossfading to the launch. Takeoff. Flash launch. Uh, and this is one time speed, you can see how like really fast this SSTO is just on launch. The flight plan for this vehicle will be keep it as low as possible until we reach that magical speed of 440 meters a second. Once that speed is achieved, it can go almost infinitely fast in Kerbin's atmosphere. Uh, we have to make sure though that it doesn't melt. If the vehicle is going too fast in the lower atmosphere, the vehicle will melt. So we have to get it to pitch the perfect speed and the perfect pitch so that it doesn't melt. So keeping it low till about 720 meters per second till I pitch up just below 90 degrees so that I can survive the re or the exiting effects of the atmosphere on the vehicle. You can see going really fast now and beginning that pitch up and you can see plasma beginning to form around the vehicle. Uh, the oxidizer mode on the rapier engines will be, yep, they just engaged. And the nuclear engines are currently running. The nuclear engines have a very low TWR, however, so we have to make sure that they're burning at all times until we're in orbit. Once we're in orbit, their TWR is not a big issue, as there's no real reason to need them. Well, we're still going to need them, but we're not going to need to have any, like, measures where if they don't burn properly, then the mission's done. Once we're in orbit, we're pretty much safe. Uh, so now it has just enough fuel to go to Minmus to land and return. Not by much, but it has just enough. Uh, so we're gonna do we're gonna go to Minmus and then do some orbital inclination changes so that we can land right next to Saturn V and the base. And once we've landed on the once we've landed next to the base, then we can move the Kerbals into the vehicle so that we can finally get the Saturn V refuel. So here you can see that I'm making a that I'm making a uh, maneuver out to Minmus, and then I am, uh, once I get that maneuver, I'm going to make an orbital inclination change. And once that happens, then I can, well, once I time warp to the orbital inclination, I can make that orbital inclination change very quickly. You can see how awesome Minmus looks with the awesome parallax mod. Highly recommend that mod. I had that in my last video too. Looks very awesome. So now circularizing the orbit and then making the orbital inclination change to get the same orbital inclination as the Saturn V. So now we're beginning our deorbit burn and slowly moving down towards the Saturn V. Activate the engine and start to spin a little bit, but that's just to get closer to the Saturn V. And as we get closer, I begin to just burn retrograde until eventually, once the vehicle's at a low enough speed, then I put it onto its wheels, engage the landing gear, and just kind of land on the ground. I may have deactivated the engine a bit early here, so it kind of hit the ground a little bit hard, but it survived, so it was fine. And then I used the nuclear engines to kind of move it over to the Saturn V, which I ended up maybe going a little bit too fast. And I put alt time warp on here, and then activated the nuclear engines again in a second here to get even faster to the Saturn V, but then I realized I was going to hit it, so I activated them again, which was dumb, and the wing clipped the fin on the Saturn V, but somehow it didn't cause any damage to the Saturn V. So I just kind of moved the craft back around with the reaction wheels, and then used the nuclear engines to move it back to the Saturn V. Once it was at the Saturn V, uh, then I could move the mobile base, but we had to wait till I got it back to the Saturn V. So I just begin to spin it around with the reaction wheels and then fire up those nuclear engines to get it back. Now it's back at the Saturn V, brakes are on, ladder deployed, uh, and then I get the Kerbal out and just kind of 
uh, get the Kerbal and get the docking ports out and so that I can attach the docking ports to the Saturn V. Uh, I just attached the docking port to the lowest part of the Saturn V. I'd later have to move it up, but I didn't have to for now. So I just attached the... that's a junior docking port, so I just attached the junior docking port to the bottom of the Saturn V. And then I grabbed the other docking port with the Kerbal, moved it on top of the SSTO, and then just used the Kerbal's RCS pack to fly over to the Minmus base. And this is the awesome mobile Minmus base, because non-mobile Minmus bases are not cool, so mobile Minmus bases are better because they can move. So now we're moving the mobile Minmus base over to the Saturn V. I really gotta come up with a better name for this. Mobile Minmus base. Hmm. That's a bad name. Well, I gotta come up with a better name. Eh, yeah, whatever. So, moving the Kerbal from the uh, Minmus base to the Saturn Steel so I can grab the docking port and then I move the docking port. Very slow process of moving the docking port over to the uh, minimus base, and then I just attached it to the nose of the vehicle. That took me a while to get the placement right, but once I did, it was fine. And then I got back in the minimus vehicle, and then got ready to dock with the Saturn V. So I began, began to move the minimus base over to the Saturn V, and then began to use the reaction wheels to kind of spin it in place, and minimus is very, very low gravity. I believe it's 0 0.05 of Kerbin gravity, which is just crazy low. So just kind of moving it over with the reaction wheels and then bringing it closer with those uh, uh, electric motor wheels and then ready to dock it, but I realized that was too low, so I moved it up a little bit. Uh, and then I got the mobile, ba mobile base even closer to it. I realized it wasn't docking, so I, I went to the Kerbal and just kind of moved the docking port just a little bit. I just moved it up and it instantly coupled together. So then I could begin the mining process. So with uh, action group one, which deployed everything there, and then action group two to begin the mining, I can finally start the mining process on the mobile bait. And what that allows us to do is begin to turn that ore into liquid fuel and oxidizer to fuel up that Saturn V. Now I didn't realize how long this was going to take and I thought it would be a faster process, but every time it became night, the system would run out of power. So it took a much longer time than I had expected and ended up becoming an incredibly lengthy process. So you can see that the fuel's going up there. Uh, I ended up cutting some of this out because it just took ages because I had to time warp, then stop time warp, time warping, then, st then start time warping, then stop time warping. Uh, just over and over again. So I just cut that out and then moved here where it's finally fueled up and then moved a bunch of our Kerbals from the SSTO. All of the Kerbals from the passenger mod module were moved to the Minmus base and the SSTO would uh, return once all the people were in the Minmus base. So the people in the Minmus base can do all their research with all the science modules that they have on board which I put on in the last video. Uh, so now we are going to get ready for the SSTO's departure once all the Kerbals are on board, which I'm pretty sure they all will be on board, and yeah, I think they're all on board right now. Yep, just retracting all those drills, and now using the reaction wheels to spin the SSTO around and fire up those nerve engines and just get out of there. I realized that I didn't have enough reaction wheel power to pitch up the nose of the vehicle, so I saw these mountains nearby and I just turned the vehicle around and use the nuclear engines to push it towards those mountains and then I just got it going at high enough speed that it kind of bounced off the mountains as a ramp and just flew into space like that which worked really well so that was pretty nice I thought it was just gonna explode but it didn't so we ended up getting into orbit fine unfortunately those mountains were at 90 degrees so the orbit was all off and I had to just go into a orbit of Kerbin and then just lower the apoapsis from there because I didn't want to do an orbital inclination change because I was lazy. So I just moved into a Kerbin orbit by getting out of Minmus's gravity. Um, now I'm in a Kerbin orbit, I just went to the apoapsis and lowered the periapsis so it was in Kerbin's atmosphere. And I think I did three, two or three aero braking passes to slow the vehicle down. Uh, I tried landing at the KSC but that didn't really work out too well so uh, we're now moving Yep, just got the periapsis just right, so now time warping to Kerbin. 
Can't time warp too fast, otherwise I'll just teleport through it, because it's KSP. Toggling all the molds on the rapier engines, and then I believe I shut down the nuclear engines, but I'm not sure. So first arrow breaking pass. Going just through the atmosphere really quickly, it didn't take that long. And I was just kind of at like a kind of a space shuttle orientation when the space shuttle would re-enter the atmosphere. Um so that it uh, increased the amount of drag and slowed the vehicle down. Moved up to, uh, or moved to periapsis again, did one more error breaking pass, and then I believe that I uh, extended the orbit and tried to land at the KSC. So then I moved to the apoapsis and burned a little tiny bit to get the periapsis just above 70 kilometers. Once the periapsis was just a, just a tad a bit above 70 kilometers, then I tried deorbiting to go to the KSC, but that ended up not working out too well, which you'll see in a little bit. Um, I ended up not being able to land there. Uh, shut down the nuclear engines, all the jet engines for the rapier engine mode are engaged, and we can begin the re-entry of the vehicle. So now we're going in just over 2,000 meters a second, heading in towards the KSC. Um, the reactor, the reactor was fine on this vehicle. It seemed to do really well with heat tolerance. It didn't seem to have any problems with that. The only time that the vehicle ever disintegrated on me is one time when I was trying to go to orbit. I was going, I went, uh, was going horizontal for too long, and the nose of the vehicle just incinerated. So that didn't go too well. But every other time, it's been completely fine. And I tried to use the rapier engines to fly over to the KSC, but I wasn't close enough and I didn't have enough fuel. So I ended up settling for landing in the nearby ocean, which would work sort of as a runway, but very high G impact one. Navigating the SSTO down to the ocean now. Um, don't need to deploy the landing gear because it's an ocean. Uh, and. This is at, I think it's still at 8 times speed because of just how laggy it was for some reason. I think it's because it loaded in the Saturn V and stuff, but it's now coming in for a landing, lowering it down to 1 times speed, just for the landing, and almost a touchdown, almost a touchdown, and touchdown. That's all I have for you guys today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.